this is California's Amboy Crater. Discover the beauty of a great road car, the quiet 68 Ford two-door hardtop. This one, the four-door LTD hardtop, with one of the three distinctly different roof lines on the 68 Ford, and the only hidden headlights standard in Ford's field. Ford XL Fastback. Its action lines talk of places like Le Mans, Sebring, and Daytona, where many of Ford's better ideas were born. Better ideas like a three-speed automatic select ship, not available on many other cars in Ford's field, and performance only a great road car can deliver. Quiet, strong, beautiful. A great road car. Ford has a better idea. Ford redesigned its full-size cars in 1965, and to further expand its Galaxy 500 series, it introduced the Galaxy 500 LTD in that year, which was the top-of-the-line vehicle. The launch of the LTD would also bring about a significant competitive response in the form of the Chevrolet Caprice, introduced mid-year in 1965, and in 1966, the AMC Ambassador DPL, the Plymouth Fury VIP, and Dodge Monaco were all introduced. These were all range-topping full-size sedans and hardtops that came standard with pretty significant features and content. By 1968, the LTD had really grown into its own, having become its own model in the 1967 model year and selling about 110,000 vehicles. For 1968, the LTD became increasingly popular and was selling about 135,000 units at this period in time. And for 1968, the LTD went through a significant redesign for its last year of the first generation platform before it was revised in 1969. This 1968 revision included standard concealed headlamps, the only such instance of concealed headlamps as standard equipment on a car in the LTD's price point. Other vehicles did have them, though, as optional, including the Chevrolet Caprice and Impala. Interiors were also redesigned for the 1968 model year, including an all-new instrument panel, which had a large crash pad in front of the driver for safety reasons. Ford's flower pot steering wheel that was on all Ford vehicles for the 1967 model year before they could implement collapsible steering columns was now eliminated and all Fords got this revised two-spoke steering wheel. All LTDs rode atop a 119-inch wheelbase and weighed a relatively light 3,600 to 3,700 pounds. They also had a base price just north of $3,000 at about $3,150 for the hardtop coupe and the pillared sedan, and $3,200 for the hardtop sedan. An excellent value at the time for what you got. For purposes of comparison, the Chevrolet Caprice was about $100 more expensive in base price than the LTD in 1968. And while the LTD itself was designed as a range-topping automobile for the Ford brand, there was also an optional interior brome package trim that gave the customer these box pleated seats as well as faux wood grain on the dash that jazzed up the instrument panel and a bit of faux wood grain on the door cards as well. And buyers could option up these LTDs to their heart's desires with everything from power steering, power brakes, power windows, seats, split bench seats, air conditioning, AM FM radio, and even a convenience check panel that was mounted below the dash to let drivers know when a door was ajar or the seat belts were not buckled. Under hood, customers could select from a number of different engine options. The base engine was a 302 cubic inch V8 with a two barrel carburetor, making 210 gross horsepower. This might not sound like a lot, especially for a full-size car, 
But owning a 302 in my 1968 Meteor Montcalm, which is effectively a Mercury Park Lane body riding atop a Ford LTD chassis, I can tell you that this 302 is more than perfectly acceptable. It's a wonderfully smooth engine. It's very torquey, much more torquey than the later Ford 5-liter V8s in the 1980s, and it moves the car surprisingly quickly. It doesn't have a lot of passing power north of about 40 or 50 miles an hour, but it has torque for days, and you can cruise on the freeway at 80 miles an hour all day long and in comfort. Next up was a 390 cubic inch two-barrel V8, making 265 horsepower. This was Ford's famous engine that had been around by this period for some time and part of the FE or Ford Edsel family of engines. Ford named this version of the 390 engine the Thunderbird V8. However, one up from this 390 cubic inch two barrel engine was a 390 cubic inch four barrel engine that Ford deemed the Thunderbird special, making 315 horsepower and this engine was now a high compression engine with 10 and a half to one compression ratio. This was also the engine that came standard in Mercury Park Lanes and Marquee of the era. One up from this Thunderbird Special V8 was the 428 cubic inch four barrel V8, again deemed the Thunderbird, but making 340 horsepower with a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. This is the same engine that found its way under the hood of seven liter galaxies for a number of years and also into some various Mercury Cougars. Transmissions range from the C4 automatic with the 302 to the FMX and C6 with the 390 and the C6 with the 428. And manual transmissions were also available, but very, very rare on vehicles during this time period. Overall, the combination of value, performance, and comfort, as well as great styling, seemed to sway a number of buyers toward Ford in 1968. And having owned a number of Fords of this era, I can tell you that the vehicles just have a wonderfully sublime quality about them, with the doors closing beautifully, the interior fit and finish and materials excellent, the engines as smooth and powerful and quiet, the transmissions, albeit a bit firmer shifting, but quite durable during this time period, and the overall ride of the Fords during this era is just sublime, so long as you're not looking for cars that are excellent handlers. If you want an excellent handling car, go get a Chrysler or go get a GM vehicle because it's really tough to find on a Ford unless it has the optional heavy-duty ride and handling package, which some vehicles were outfitted with but was quite rare despite its roughly $15 to $20 price as an option. In fact, there really aren't many downsides to owning one of these Fords of this era. Aside from the Motorcraft 4300 four-barrel carburetor, if you get a car with an engine that's topped with one of Ford's four Venturi options, really aside from that, everything on these cars is nearly bulletproof. The power windows don't even have the infamous Ford plastic torque pins that the later window motor gears would have that you'd often have to replace. So if you find a late 1960s LTD, I can highly recommend owning one so long as you find one that doesn't have rust on the body. And be sure to check in particular for frame rot behind the front wheels of the car as well as behind the rear wheels. They tend to rust in particular at the torque boxes right behind the front wheels and also the frame does the same. So be wary of that. If you find a car that's solid in that area and looks good, I can highly recommend ownership. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the 1968 LTD. Let's close out with one more video commercial from 1968 showing the full-size Ford lineup. Greatness takes years. In 65, Ford built an LTD quieter than a Rolls-Royce. In 66, one quieter than many of Europe's finest cars. In 67, a car strong enough to ride off an Olympic ski jump and still stay quiet. Now, the 68 Ford, a great road car. Quiet, strong, beautiful. Disappearing headlights open on LTD. Rugged from roofline to road. Inside, pure comfort, wide and deep. All the fine touches of wood grain detail. Here's beauty built to stand the test of time. XL Fastback. An all-new interior. Deep.
bucket seats and a console with Ford's man-sized ship. In every windswept line, XL Fastback is built to last and stay quiet about it. The Ford Galaxy 500 convertible, a great road car, and that means performance. For 68, there are five Ford V8s to move you. Swift, quiet, this quiet. Yeah.